G'day guys, Ron here from Osborne Digital Marketing. Today, I'm going to show you how many internal and external links a blog post should have. Let's uh, jump into it. So as you can see behind me, this is the target keyword that we're going to utilize today. So you can gain that understanding of how many internal and external links uh, a blog post should have. So firstly, what I like to do is I like jumping over into the uh, lovely SEMrush. Okay, so there'll be a link to this down below. So if you want to go ahead and utilize SEMrush, just click on the link down below. Now, what I like to do is I throw this in here first. Two reasons. I like to get a bit of an understanding first. I like to see, okay, do I need to go after this with a lot of links, little links? And what you can do is this awesome feature. <laughs> I absolutely love this. So as you can see here, SEMrush provides a SERP analysis. So all you need to do is scroll over here and start to see, okay, how many backlinks would I need to try and go after this keyword that I'm going after? Because that's what you're trying to determine. You've created a blog post around a keyword and now you're trying to figure out how many internal links and external links, or you're contemplating if it's worth doing. Because before you even start the work, you should always look at this because you don't want to put all the effort into something and it uh, doesn't pan out because you need to do a lot of off page. So as you can see behind my head, I'll just bend forward a bit more. You can see the backlink profile here. Like, okay, cool. So, you know, it looks around about, I use median, not the average. Uh, that's gonna, that's a skewed statistic and so is this. So you can start to see, I'd probably be saying you're looking at least 200 ish. It's around about there, 150, probably be the median. Okay, so you sort of get an understanding of how many external links a blog post should have. The next thing to do is actually have a look at the SERP for ideas. Now you're gonna notice this tool right here. So this thing right here is SEO Quake. So it's a free Chrome extension. It'll be linked down below. You can go ahead and utilize that. So you can see how many external links and all of this are coming into the page. So as you can see by this uh, little thing here, yeah, you guys can cl clearly see that. So you can see this info here. So if we jump back, we've utilized the same keyword, it should be uh, this one, what is it, World Pursuit? It says 63 here, if we jump back, it should be 63 again. Yeah, there you go, beautiful. So that's what you can see, you can start to see, okay, cool, but what's the best way of doing it? What's the uh, ultimate way of determining, determining how many internal links and how many external links there are. How do you do that? Let me show you how. So what you'll need, again, is that SEO Quake. Let's open up the first few. All right, so let's have a look. Let's grab just the top three. Now, if it's something that's a little bit more competitive, grab the top five, grab the top five, because it just helps statistically with the numbers. All right, so you're gonna need something like a Google Sheet, now let me show you this cool stuff. So firstly, what we want to do is, as you can see, here's the uh, SEO Quake bar. See this little uh, dot thing over here? Click on this. Now what's going to happen is it's going to open the profile. Now this is running a little bit slow, so that's making me nervous because Google's been crashing on me lately. Thanks, Google. So yeah, what's going on? Come on. All right, guys, I'm back. Uh, unfortunately, it, uh, Google crashed again. So again, like all, all I've done, first one's open. Let's go to the second one. You're just clicking on that info button. Now that's going to start opening up all these tabs that you can see here, running super fast. It's not my internet, it's this uh, Chrome update. It was completely fine until they introduced this new, new Chrome update. So I'm gonna completely shut down these pages, guys. Completely shut them down because it's, yeah. As you can see, it's lagging again. Beautiful. Now, so you'll need a Google Sheet, Excel, whatever you want to utilize. So what you want to do now is you want to have a look and see how many internal and external links there are, okay? So you can scroll down. There's 63 backlinks coming in, which is external. So like I said before, so the first one, you know, you can do external like an e for external i for internal how many you would need on that page so we need 63 uh externals let's, let's make let's beautify this a little bit because it's pretty ugly when it's sitting like that okay so 
And this is just how I do it. This is the simplest way of trying to work out how many internal and external uh, links a blog post should have. So let's uh, grab the internals. Uh, so I need to have, oh, it has 154 internals on that page. Okay, 154. Let's go to number two. Again, closing down the page, guys. Just So internal, 76. And only two links, okay. Seventy-six. And the final one. Okay, so forty-seven internals, eight externals. All right. Oh, what was that? It was forty-seven, wasn't it? Forty-seven. Yeah, it was. Okay, cool bananas. This is why you use the spreadsheet, guys. Now, what I do equals median. I prefer the median um, two reasons, okay? Two reasons. Because as you can see, realistically, this data is skewed, okay? Back to the page, the example of SEMrush, the data, there was someone that had like 2,200 links on there but the average was on the lower end, like of the top 10, it sort of looked like 150 ish. That's why you, I don't I don't prefer averages. Personally, I, I don't think that averages are the best way of capturing the data. I think the median, you want to find the middle. Why? Because if you do more than the middle, you should be okay. If you do the average, the thing is it costs money. All of this costs a lot of money. If you start applying averages, the the numbers will be different. So as an example, let's even try it now. Let's and I'll show you. So remember, like you've got to pay for these backlinks, right? Enter. You've got to pay for these backlinks. Whether they're from PBNs, whether they're from you know sites you own, whatever it is, you you would need to pay for these backlinks. Now, would you rather pay for eight backlinks or twenty four? I'd rather pay for eight. I'm sure my clients would rather pay for eight. And that's why I prefer the median. So this is how you determine how many internal and external links a blog post should have. You calculate it out by starting with SEMrush. Have a look at that data. From there, jump across into the additional stuff. So that's where you have a look, you see it all, okay, awesome. Jump over into the SERP, open up SEO Quake and start having a look at all of this now have a look at the externals down here have a look at the internals you can start to see how many internal and external links a blog post should have from doing that now like i said this is the median calculation this is the average so each to their own i like the median because it's the middle if i rely on the middle and do a little bit more i should be okay and i should save money in that process that's why I prefer utilizing that instead of averages. A lot of people in this in the SEO game utilize averages. I don't because I, I just think same results, you know, literally three times less the money. So that's why I utilize that approach. It's up to you how you do it. Now, if I have answered the question of how many internal and external links a blog post should have, Make sure you return that favor, hit the like button, subscribe, hit me up if you have any questions down below and uh, have a lovely day guys. Cheers.